How are you folks? I'm currently sat on the southern top of Yarlside in the Howgill Fells. I set off from home this morning after much kicking myself up the arse because I couldn't decide whether to even set off because it was throwing down or whether to stay local. Anyway, I've took a chance, I've driven up to near Sedba and I'm just on my way up to bag another Dales 2000 footer that I've not done, which is Yarlside. Um, like I said, I'm on the southern end and I've just got like the final summit dome, just a little bit higher up. I'm going to camp somewhere, I'm not sure where yet. I'm thinking maybe uh, on the top of, uh, what's it called? Courtley Crag. I might camp up there, which is quite near where I camped in the Ogils in that, in that sheepfold last year. Uh, but no, the weather conditions much better up here than they are than they are back home. I'm glad I've come out. Right, so I'm on the summit of Yale side. I'm just looking across to the Lake District. So just above my finger there is the Scarfells. There's a bit of weather coming in as well. Over there, I hope that misses me. And here, looking southeast, we've got a trio of Dales classics. You can make out going from right to left, Ingleborough, Wernside, Penny Gent's just showing. The extreme left, just poking out from the side of Bothfell. I've just stopped above Bowderdale Head just to show you the view of Cortley Spout. Now, Cortley Spout is England's highest above ground cascade waterfall, so I've read. And by cascade, I mean like not a single drop, it's like a series of, of falls, really. I think it's about 200 metres. It is fantastic. And we're going to walk up the side of that, hopefully, if, uh, if we can. There's a, there's a bit of a sketchy path, but we should get, should get better views of the waterfall. There is Yarl side. From the top of the cut across to this one and follow this steep slope down to the pass. And then I've just scrambled up the side of the waterfalls. Yeah, I'm gonna have a bite to eat here. Quick check of the map. I need to get some water. And I'm probably gonna follow the uh, the edge above Corley Crag. It's a little bit early to camp yet, but I've not seen a soul all day. Not a soul, considering this, this walk to the waterfall is a popular walk. Saying that, uh, I have arrived here in a roundabout way, really. Just look at the colour of that water. Crystal clear, proper mountain stream stuff that. Right, I found my pitch, nice little flat bit, just above the crags. A lot of sheep, Bob, but I'll boot that way and uh, clear a pitch.
Right, let's have a look at the tent organisation. Bit of a tip outside. I'm going to brew up in a minute, so that's why that's out. I'm in full winter sleeping bag. Uh, it's pretty cold actually. I think uh, up here, I think it said it was going to drop quite low tonight. Drink wise tonight, I've got half a bottle of wine. I've managed to get hold of a half bottle sized plastic, plastic bottle, which is handy. I just fill that up with wine and uh, slots nicely into my rucksack. No risk of smashing out either. I'm also in here got my big down coat in case I want to spend a bit of time outside the tent tonight. Big gloves, big winter gloves. No, not taking any chances. Rightio. Well, I found a fantastic pitch really. Right where I wanted it on the on the top side of Cortley Crag. Not gone too far along yet, the, the eyes point's a bit higher up up there. Um, but but it's a great viewpoint. I can see straight across facing me is Wildboar and Swarth Fells. Over that way is our old friend from, from April, that freezing camp on, on Boar Fell, that's down there. I can see sort of one in the gap over there. I'm not sure what that one is. That could be, I don't know, Great Shona Fell maybe. I see Malastang Edge over there too. And best of all, my old pal cross fell. I can see that just, just from here now. I'm looking at it now. Isn't that nice? Fantastic. I'm going to make a warm drink because it is quite chilly. Oh, this is nice. My hands are freezing, so it's warming them up. Ooh. This is the life, isn't it? Just look at the light on the fell across there. Absolutely awesome. And the low sun just picking up all the all the gullies and uneven ground on both fell. You get a good view of Cartley Crag from here. Oh, just heard a raven. First one I've heard today. It's quite an impressive uh, cliff face really. I reckon, maybe late 18th century, you'd have got golden eagles nesting on them crags. Oh, for those days when there's golden eagles nesting in the Pennines there, eh? wouldn't that be great? Right, it's almost quarter to eight, and I'm going to get my tea in a minute. What a transformation in the conditions. It were, although it was chilly, it was nice outside. Quite a lot of blue sky, sinking sun, illuminating all the fell sides. Re really pleasant. And all of a sudden, it was like a wall of cloud came in from the south. It, it beheaded Boar Fell, then it covered Swarth Fell and Wild Boar Fell, and then, then it was all around me. I've checked the forecast for tomorrow morning. Initially, it was supposed to be a good visibility. Anyway, now it's saying poor, so I'm going to be missed in morning, I think. Uh, but no, I'm quite quite snug in the tent now. It's uh, quite comfortable, quite pleasant. But like I say, I'm going to get something to eat, and I'll speak to you later on. I don't use this brand very much. 
Um, but anyway, I saw it, saw it in a shop in Ebden Bridge, so I picked it up. Pasta bolognese for tea tonight. It's almost 11 o'clock. I'm wide awake. I really should get my head down, but I know I'm not. I'm not tired. I'm not, I'm not going to get any sleep. Not for a while, anyway. Um, the weather's been a bit changed, but we've had some rain. Then I stuck my head out again, and moon's out. Uh, quite nice. You can see little little tiny pinpricks of light on the. Well, in fact, I can hear a bit of rain now. Uh, you can see little tiny pinpricks of light across the valley on the slopes of Wild Boar Fell. Further north, uh, top end of Malastang, them sort of places. Looks quite, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Quite, quite atmospheric, isn't it? When when you're in a, in a, a remote place, and it's just just these little isolated signs of habitation. Uh, so what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to put on some podcasts. I think, have a lie down, and I might just nod off. I don't think I will though. But yeah, that, that'll be it for tonight and I'll uh, speak to you again in the morning. Good night. Morning folks, it's half past six. I've been up about half an hour. Um, didn't have a bad night's sleep really. I woke up about about three o'clock. I'd, I'd had some right weird dreams. One of them, I dreamt uh, I was shouting at my kids at a window and they were just, just completely ignoring me, which which is what they do in the real world, not just the dream world. <laughs> um, but I was really, really shouting, so I kind of wonder if, if my dream woke me up. Maybe I was shouting, really, I don't know. And then I had a dream that I'd gone looking for a rare bird with my dad. And we found the bird. It was kind of warbler, I don't know exactly what sort. And it was right tame and it was landing on my head. <laughs> and then it started pecking around the edge of my eyeballs but in a really gentle way so it didn't hurt me and my dad were oohing and eyeing because he got loads of good pictures of this bird perched on my head uh, yeah I woke up about three o'clock with an absolute raging thirst so I got myself a, a cup of water then I got back off to sleep um, and yeah I, I, I woke up at six it's absolutely pitch black outside sun rises I think about seven o'clock it looks misty. I've started already, sort of packing down a little bit. Um, I want to be away quite quickly. I've, I've got to be home quick today. I've got to take my daughter dancing. So I can't be late for that. So I'm going to carry on slowly packing away. And I'll come back to you when, when, I, when I've got packed away and the tents away. Right, I'm well on the descent now. I'm just walking on this steep path down by the side of uh, Courtley Spout. It's quite a dramatic path, really. It's all been stepped with stones, but mega, mega slippy. I'm glad I've got my walking poles. Not long now, though, and I'll soon be on level ground. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up now, I think, for this one. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward level walk back to the car. I don't think there's anything of excitement that we're going to encounter along the way. But yeah, a bit, bit of a dismal morning, very gloomy, cloud based, proper low, really drizzly and damp. But I'm so glad I came on this walk because I was close to just, just either not bothering or staying near home. Because yesterday were great, it was so nice to sit outside the tent. So it was the end of October and you're sitting outside the tent till quite late, it's uh, a real bonus that one. Anyway, thanks for watching and look after yourselves and I'll see you next time. <laughs>